Hey guys, Dave here and I'm here with Todd and today we're going to be talking about MC4 connectors and some of the problems with the manufacturing done with them and sometimes the problems, more likely the problems with the installation. So the human factors involved in running maybe your DC pump or your solar hybrid air conditioner or maybe you have a Victron MPPT that has MC4 jacks on it. The natural tendency, oh, this thing's bad, but before you make that assumption, assume that more likely that there's a cut somewhere in your connection of your MC4 connectors. There's a bad connection point somewhere. So Todd, take it away. Hello. Okay, so if you're trying to get something going, you pull apart your MP4 connectors using the <laughs> Solar disconnection tool. So we'll do the slow motion to oh, yeah. show right where this goes. See the tapered part? You want to put those, those things right on the taper. Like that. Pull the part. That's it. So right in the right on this right on these tapered parts. groove. These these clips go through there. Yeah, they go through there and hook on the edge, so you gotta release them. And if they're not, we'll push in one more time. And so you can see how hopefully. You can see how they should look when they're all the way through. All right, and so you just push that on there. It can be a little tricky. Oh, and if you don't have one of these, a good old pair of solderless terminal pliers will work fine. Just push it in on the taper. And if you don't have either of these, your fingernails will work, but they're much, uh, can be very frustrating. And all right. Okay, so I've seen with my own eyes that you can measure DC voltage coming from your array on the positive and negative wires. And the voltage is relevant to how many panels and whether you have hooked up in series or parallel or whatever. But the problem is, if you have a bad connection at some point between here and the solar panel, you can measure voltage. But as soon as you put a load on it, the voltage will drop out because it's barely touching and the load itself pushes the contact points apart. So that's why it'll keep dropping out. It'll still measure voltage, but it won't work. So this is what we found. And by the way, that's like bad news because the, the, the concept, the best case scenario is everything's connected nice and solidly. The second best scenario is it's connected very poorly and there's a big gap. But if there's a little connection, that spells potential fire or melding. melding yeah, MP4s. This, this is one of the things to look for right here. Look inside this female connector. You see how far down that is? And see uh, go, go, go show that one more time. Well, let's look at this one first, the male one. Look inside that one. You see it? Uh, whoops. Yeah, now finally I do. Okay, so yeah, it's it? way way down way there. Down so it's there. probably half an inch down there. This is what it's supposed to look like. So that's pretty much up, right to, up the, to the edge. Uh, right up to the right. edge. Okay. And why does it do that? It does it because some of these MP4 connectors are missing a sleeve that goes in here that this hooks to. Okay. So th this, this allows it to slide back and forth. So if you're trying to push it together to, to connect those, it hits the edge of it, it's just going to push that down instead of going together. So what you need is a fitting that fits on there that locks in place. Then you tighten the nut down that secures around the outside edge of the wire and keeps it from moving. Okay. Okay. So where, show me one with and without a sleeve. You got okay. one? This one does not have a sleeve. All right, we'll take note and let's put the other one. And this one has a slip. You see inside here? Yeah. I better without the flashlight, I think. So you can see that one on the right has a little metal sleeve, the other one doesn't. And so the um, there's nothing for the pin to sit on, hold seat to. So we're going to put this one on here just to show you how it snaps in place. See that? Okay, solid. So it won't you can pull you could pull it off, right or no? Yeah, no, it, it, it would be, you could, but it'd be difficult. But that's what this nut is for. You tighten this up, and it cinches it around the insulation and keeps it from moving. Okay. And they have actual tools with these you can use on it. Uh, if you don't have one of these, 
or uh, if you have one of these it's not the right, the right one for the round part you can use this and just a regular pair of channel locks or pliers you don't have to go you know 400 foot pounds of torque well we have the, we have two of them so let's see if we can show what potentially well, this, this normally would just go on here and then tighten up but as you can see that the layout of the cap is from that so that's why I say you can use a pair of channel lock suppliers. It doesn't have to be. So that the pro yeah the problem with these these MC4 connectors is there's a lot of inconsistency. Now MC4 stands for multi connector four millimeter. Back in invented by Stobley or its predecessor, appropriately called multi connector in 1996. But the problem is that these now you know they're. They're, they're made in China. Some are China cheap, some are good quality, some are IP67 rated, so six for keeping out dust, seven for keeping out water at, put it under water, three, uh, 30 minutes uh, for one meter water and it should stay well sealed. But, it, but, you know, you're dealing with all different, potentially you're connecting two different connectors, so that's why it's especially important to make sure everything connects here so and one more uh, safety tip this is always going to be your positive wire coming from your array and it should always have the male end going towards the load okay so like Dave said whether it's a solar powered unit of some sort this is going to be your positive the male this is going to be your negative the female okay and your equipment is going to be just the opposite your equipment is going to have the female that the positive plugs into and this stops it for the negative so and by the way, what's what's crazy is that this is um, this is a male, and yet this has actually inside has the female pin, right? And this is uh, so the female pin looks like this. And another potential problem is that if these come if they come from the same manufacturer, you shouldn't have this problem. But if they're from two different manufacturers, maybe maybe one pin is. You know, the, the female is too loose for the male, or the... Um, male's not big enough. The ma male's not, uh, his girth isn't right, or whatever. And so, the, the potentially, you could have them fall out, but this is how they should look. This is how they should fit, too. Nice and snug like that. Okay. All right, so that's not coming out. No, and that's making good contact, see? But it's not going to sit there and arc. But when it's not all the way up, and these don't go together, they're just touching like this. So you need to, so either they're just touching like that, or they're two ones and the other, but it's too loose. So, you know. That's, uh, that's a good fit, and that's a good contact. Right. So these are met, met for each other. Yeah. A couple made in heaven, so. <laughs> they're both happy. Yeah. Now, we can demonstrate on how to properly put on the connector. Uh, you want to start out with a clean edge, not the edge that looks like that. Lineman pliers, this is 10 gauge wires, so it's a lot harder to cut. Okay, and if you don't have an auto stripper like this, again, the solderless terminal pliers with a number 10 notch on it will strip it just fine. But show your fancy auto stripper. Okay. I so, how much do you strip off? About three quarters of an inch. All right. And you twist the end of the wire so it doesn't come on parade on you. And then you put on the, this is going to be a female end, so it takes a, a male pin on the female connector, if that makes sense. Okay. So in terms of color coding, I mean, so this is this is going to be the negative, right? Or, or no, does it's it... going to be the positive, but okay. the, it's the female. Oh, yeah, because it's going to, it's going to, it has a female end because it's going to be going the next, Part of the journey is to the positive. The so goes, or the male pin goes in the female connector. Right, okay. and then the and that that female connector always attaches to a male connector, which is always positive on the terminal device. Right. Yeah, this will be on the unit, for example. Yeah. Okay. On a solar air conditioner. Or one end of the red wire, I should say. Right. It goes female, male, female, male. All right. So you this. Uh, connector right here just slides on. I, that's why I make it about three quarters of an inch long, is so it'll sit, it'll hold it for you when you put it on. It goes up inside the the uh, connect the pin. Okay. Make it so. And then some of these crimpers are great. Uh, you know, some are, are difficult to use to get it started because of these straight edges on it. So I usually take a pair of pliers and just fold over the little edge like that. 
Then take the crimping tool. And so how does it go in the crimping tool? Just like that. So what side was, so the U part, the U of the crimp, the curved part of the crimp goes to the curved part on the bottom. It really doesn't matter. You can do it either way. That's all you got to do. It's on there. Okay. Make good contact. Now, you, I've heard of your double crimp technique. Is that something you want to... Well, I mean, I, this is something I do, but I, I, it's not recommended in any type of installation manual. But I double crimp it. I add a second crimp right above where it crimped onto the, the wire. So it's got two crimps there and there. This right. has a better you know, connectivity and, and less problems. Because there's not a lot of, I mean... Yeah, I mean, you're talking about a pretty small surface for connectivity there, right. so it better I mean, be... You can uh, carry some, a lot of amps on those, and not having good contact will uh, certainly cause you some problems. Right. So, uh, not, this, this piece right here is dual purpose. It's got a rubber seal, which provides your weatherproofing for the MP4 connector. So you can kind of see the... Can you separate those? Yeah, here, dude, I'll take it out and take a look at it. Some of these are all one piece. But ultimately, that's just a rubber seal. Okay. And so, uh, what do you do first? Just slide this on, like this. So now and you can see the rubber seal. And that up against the housing. This crimps down onto the, the outside skin of the wire and holds it in place. And, and keeps the rubber seal tight against this. And when you press this in here, you feel it kind of click. And... Uh, like that. Okay, it's I on. kind of heard the click. That, that, it clicked in place, and you know it's in there. You look in the end, see a wire in there, the, the metal thing in there, down about. Right. So this one, inch. so the on the female, it is in there about a half inch. It is pretty well recessed in there, about a half an inch. Yeah. On the male, not so much. Pretty much comes right up to, right the, to the edge. edge. Like that. Okay. And then so. Right, and so the the back side of that, you can screw on the... Um, this is as far as it goes right there. You can also look and see how far that goes by just putting your finger at the end. Right. And then looking in there and see... And make sure you got it's going to make contact. you got a metal thing to connect to in there. Right. And you can feel it when you push it together, too. Right. So, and then talk about tightening these on the back side. <clears throat> right, right. You want to make sure these are tight because that, again, holds the wire from being pulled out when you... When stretching them out or, or hooking them to something to get pulled on this holds it in place and again you can so this it. holds the the wire in place right it gets it's pushed down purpose, what yeah. is this thing called uh it's a tensioner it, it it gets tighter as this nut gets closer to this body it pushes down on these tines right here on the back and creates a, a grip okay and it'll grip this wire and you won't be able to move it once those are tight so then no water if it's tight and you can also use these tools right. to uh, tighten that. Um, to tighten it up, you have to take it apart to use those. If only we had a tool to take it apart. <laughs> I just want to demonstrate you could do it with your fingers if you need to, but some of these are really, really snug. So you have to take it apart to use this tool. It goes on like that. Now. This tool will work on this type of end, like so. And then this one goes on here like this. And tighten it up. Like I say, you don't have to go super tight with it, just snug. So that keeps water and dust and things from coming in the back, and it also keeps that pin from moving, right? Because yeah, it's, it's solid. If, if the pin is moving around, it's... Uh, if, if this is loose, there's nothing holding this wire in there except that crimp on that, that metal piece. Right. That's the only thing holding it. And, and so it reinforces the crimp. Right. And if this doesn't lock in place on here, when you go put it together, that sleeve will push this one out. And they'll just be touching. That's why it's so critical to make sure that it's to the very end and it doesn't move. Right. Okay. Oops, let me, uh, hold, you hold it and I'll push my camera to focus on it. So yeah, this is how, one more time, this is, the male is almost all the way to the end. The female is recessed around, it's yeah. hard to tell, maybe half, half an inch, three eighths. I'd say more like a half. Yep. Okay. Um, and uh, any other words of wisdom on these? 
No, no, that should do it. I mean, that should probably eliminate a lot of problems, I would say. So how do you know if you made a good connection or what's, like you have a meter there, what would you test well, with the... The best way to tell is when you have a load on it, you put clip your amp meter on the, one of the cables and see if you've got amperage. If you do, then you've got voltage. Right, and if, and if the... Or else you can check the open circuit voltage, which should be, if nothing, if it has no load, it should be in line with whatever the... VOC rating is on the back of your panels. The back of the panel, and what, how many panels you have? Is it hooked in series or parallel or whatever? It all makes a difference. But yeah, folks. So do make sure you check your connections because that's probably the culprit. Take them apart, check for that gap, make sure they're not gapping, and make sure that the pins, one's not the the female is not too loose for the male or the male. You know, make sure that they fit snugly, and then uh, you should be successful. Thanks for your time. We talk about solar. We talk about air conditioning. We talk about solar-powered air conditioning at the Air Spool Channel. Thanks.